నమస్తే కొనిచో హలో వెల్కమ్ టు ద నూ పూర్తి వాడి షో ఎపిసోడ్ నెంబర్ సెవెంటీన్ ప్రజెంటెడ్ బై హిల్ టోక్యో అండ్ హిల్ ఇండియా కార్పొరేట్ ఇన్ సైడ్ ఈజ్ అవర్ మీడియా పార్ట్నర్ అండ్ అవుట్ ఫిట్ బై వినాయకం టుడేస్ గెస్ట్ యా దేవి సర్వభూతేషు శక్తి రూపేణు సంస్థిత నమస్త సై నమస్త సై నమస్త సై నమో నమో ఎస్ సి ఈజ్ అ ఓమెన్ అ ఓమెన్ హూ హ్యాస్ ప్రూవ్డ్ దట్ ఇఫ్ సి ఈజ్ డిట్ అ మైండ్ she can do anything and everything without wasting much time let's welcome dr rita jair namaskar namaskar welcome to the nupur tiwari show and i feel so blessed you know uh La- two weeks ago i had my guest dr ruma devi another diva and today you were with me another diva so i feel like you know i'm really really exploring the indian women the good side and definitely you know untold stories which the world should know and uh, i definitely as i said i feel blessed that you are in my show and uh, through my show the viewers from japan and definitely this is uh, this is not there is no boundary this is youtube and uh, through internet anywhere in the world viewers can watch so yes once again welcome to the nupur tiwari show so uh, have you ever been to japan oh very long ago i went to a place called higashi harima that was on a ship and it was for a few days and i was of course very very fascinated uh, the cultures are uh, different and yet the so the so much the same because we are all human beings so that is what i know but uh, the rest is all the what i have heard and read about uh, japan okay so i just want to compliment you that you are looking gorgeous thank you <laughs> so it's a you know women and bodybuilding they really don't go that hand in hand and especially when it comes to india indian women we have a lot of taboos we have though our culture is very liberal uh, our women used to be we never had parda the well anything we had great women like lopa mudra gargi in our ancient time who used to you know go to war also but whatever the reason our women are in you know started being used to inside the house so how did you feel how did you think of that no this is the thing i want to do so viewers and including me we would love to know the story uh well uh, you know our perception of women is very simplistic uh if we can compare the uh, vedas and upanishads that were thousands of years ago and the last 2 300 years of uh, uh, indian society there is a great contradiction uh you know uh, if you think of uh, lord shiva and uh, the concept of arthanareshwari there is a little bit of man in every woman and there is a little bit of woman in every man and sometimes when a man uh, adapts the uh, attributes of a woman uh, which we say are uh, are a woman's uh, you know attributes like the gentleness caring love tenderness that man emerges out to be far far stronger he appears to be there is that st- uh, strength in the stillness of a man and when a woman uh, adopts the uh, certain traits of a man say durga uh, you know when she is a fighter they uh, they, at, they they assign those attributes to a man uh, so she emerges out to be stronger so actually we are just one uh, you know so when you talk of bodybuilding uh, bodybuilding um, is in in reality if you say in actual uh, terms it is you build a body you get the best version of yourself you strengthen you you know you improve your muscle lean muscle mass and you lose fat so you are actually building and constructing something positive so uh, bodybuilding is definitely a woman's thing also it is just that our society has had a very naive and simplistic view because we think that we have evolved actually we have gone back and uh, so you know uh, definitely there is a societal 
uh, norm which we need to follow. And as I said, that we have we seem to have actually gone back. Uh, when I started, there was a lot of opposition to things uh, uh, that I was doing, and it is not uh, according to the conventional norms. I had all the opposition, and uh, but you know my circumstances, and probably I was destined to do something uh, different in my life and have an unconventional life. Uh, everybody's life has a purpose. And uh, I started very late. Uh, you know, my uh, son was about 15 years old and he wanted to go to the gym. And I went with him for the first time. And it was then that, uh, you know, I got an op a lot of opposition for just doing weight training. Forget about bodybuilding. I couldn't have even fathomed in the wildest of my imagination that I would ever do that. But I got a lot of opposition for uh, just training heavy weights, which I wanted him to you know, help him with. And uh, at that point of time... I'd uh, like to interrupt you here. So you said that opposition, it is came from your family or society itself? No, the, the, the trainers at the gym. Uh, oh, you okay. In the uh, days, women were not going to gym, say about two decades ago or 15 years ago. There was, the women were not, even with the, when they were going to the gym, uh, they, would, they would just do the cardio or, you know, uh, yoga and soft kind of exercises, uh, which are otherwise considered gentle. But when it comes to strength, but uh, my concept was, what, the, what about the women in the villages? They lift heavy weights, they go to the farm, they, do, they uh, carry water for long distances. What about them? I mean, these uh, dumbbells are nothing. We are just, you know, a fraction of them. Imagine the intense hard work. And even in the Paleolithic times, women were actually helping men in constructing houses, digging, everything. So uh, carrying children, that's heavy weight. The, a dumbbell has meaning, you know, in, even a birth weight of a child is uh, approximately around three kgs. And she lives the child for long hours. So I... I I used to always have this opposition and arguments and the more I would argue, the more, you know, it would intensify. People were out to uh, get me down. And so I actually studied about it. I qualified myself and we, we didn't have the uh, proper bodybuilding competitions in India. I traveled all over the world. I traveled to US. I had coaches and I was just so bent upon doing it. And then so I was one of the first few women who uh, you know, in fact, even now with the, the kind of international representation that I have done, I think no, no other women has done. But we have a lot of women bodybuilders. And uh, when they come up to me and say that, you know, we started uh, watching you, you know, it, it just really kind of vindicates everything. Yeah. And especially after marriage, after having your child, you started it. Such an unconventional way. We, when we get married, especially Indian women, we said, "Okay, we just uh, we like to raise our children. We like to be do. We like to get involved with something very simple. You know, I'm not saying bodybuilding is not simple. Definitely simple. But uh, you know, something as you said, yoga or uh, yoga also not simple. But you know, like anything, very uh, where you can have the communities involved. You know, those kind of after because." women especially give the priority to the family you know being with, uh, we have to be with your children pick up a drop you know all these things so we just forget about our dreams we just forget about that we have a purpose of your, our life so how like your family would love to know that how supported they were your family members because it matters yeah it is actually it matters a lot and probably sometimes you know uh, women are such uh, creatures that sometimes when you don't support them and they face opposition, the best comes out of them. Um, my son is an autistic child. He was born with autism. And so, uh, you know, I, I had been helping. I had left. I had actually left all my dreams. Uh, this is not what I really wanted to do when I was much younger. I just wanted to be a doctor. Uh, my my uh, life begins with the fact that my mother was a very uh, severe case of schizophrenia. And she used to get hallucinations. So my childhood was extremely challenging. I couldn't do uh, what I was probably destined to do, uh, what I wanted to do so so intensely. I had that fire in me. And then, you know, uh, life happened. And then my son was uh, also autistic. Uh, so uh, about 15, 16 years, uh, you know, I was just doing nothing. He wasn't accepted in a normal school. In those days, there was no awareness. There was never no sensitivity. There was just one thing, parallel. That's it. Nothing else. 
they didn't distinguish that a person with a uh, with a you know mental disorder can actually have a high IQ. And uh, so I was being with him in the school uh, for prolonged hours and. Uh, uh, you know, just uh, dropping him to school, getting him back from school, uh, being with him, rewriting the books so that he understands them in my own way, uh, do all sort of weird things, sing them out, you know, sing out the, um, you know, uh, answers or uh, create drawings to just uh, make him learn and understand. And uh, uh, the, my actual life, you know, the, the major part of my life, my prime youth actually went in completely uh, looking after him. Uh, so uh, when when he wanted to go to the gym, uh, what happened was that I felt that this is the first time he has said uh, something on his own. Uh, so I, I was like really bent upon helping him out. And the reason I was with him as a woman was that uh, he wouldn't have been able to manage at the gym. And uh, by then, uh, by the time he was that old, I was facing opposition from everywhere that I'm trying to do the impossible. Uh, the doctor said that he will not be able to talk, but he was um, in a school. So you imagine the amount of, I was like literally working 36 hours a day. Uh, we didn't have awareness here. So I wrote to my uncle in US and he sent me the literature. I created my own properties and uh, techniques so that you know just to customize it to him because as a mother I would understand and then he was able to talk word by word bit by bit even half a word by half a word I did the weirdest things created things on my own and he was talking and uh, you know by the time he was in 10th 11th uh, even the school started uh, you know giving the respect that if, even if she's not accepting the, the reality uh, as they call it and you know she's uh, fighting it out. Uh, the, the 10th and 12th board marks are not given in donation. Uh, you know you got to appear for an exam, and he did it in the general uh, category, not in the special, uh, specially abled category. Uh, so you know uh, at that time, you know um, people started uh, acknowledging that I'm 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 just different, and I have to you know just do something else in life. And so that's how um, I went to the gym, and uh, so that's the story. So I think your son is responsible for what you are doing today. I think yeah. credit goes to him. Yes. And definitely it's your fire. You never gave up. And yes, that is that I have to do something. So the family support was not there, but uh, because that was your question, uh, I strayed away a bit. But you know, that, that puts it in context. And uh, because of the kind of uh, life I had during my childhood that my mother was so sick, uh, it was a special family and then my child was uh, such that uh, nobody was agreeing with me. I was nearly living in isolation and that isolation uh, actually helped me to get the freedom to do whatever I want to do. So I always felt that if I'm not doing uh, you know, anything wrong, um, I, I need to stand for uh, what I want to do in life. So, uh, you know, it, it helps you the other way around, you know, that you are just free to do uh, whatever you want to do, you know, no matter who says what. So this is the thing, like you did not feel that I'm a victim of life. You never felt that. Yes. Just every moment you took it, took every moment like challenge, you know, yes. you just took the challenge and just, and those moments made you who you are and made you stronger ever, I guess. As yes. you said, that isolation in your childhood made you what you're doing today because you uh, felt and understood that this is this is a thing. I have to stand up for my own life. So this is actually sometimes we just uh, keep saying that, yes, uh, I, because I did not get the facility, I did not get because my family was not supportive, so I could not do anything in life. So you are the best example when uh, we can say that you really don't need anyone to support you. You have to stand up for yourself. So today's. Yeah, so I'm just going back to a little bit uh, like uh, when, where we started, like you said, we, ha we have gone back. We haven't evolved, we have gone back. So like today's youth, especially women, girls, today's uh, the girls who are really in the teenage or uh, the twenties, like they are too much influenced by uh, Western culture, you know? So uh, like they feel, I have um, really, I have spoken to many. They feel that our culture is not really, um, there is no equality. There is nothing, um, you know, not like Western culture. They, they really prefer Western culture. So 
what would you like to say for those women those girls and uh, the teenage who are really going to step in in their 20s and they will be facing a lot of problems in, uh, in their lives because you know they will be evolving whether what to choose there in their life so definitely you are the best example of choosing the right path so definitely and for those girls and women uh, no comparison to indian culture its interpretation as i said in the last uh, uh, two centuries is has been uh, maybe you know uh, during the british era uh, let me tell you something about uh, the heritage that we have uh, if, you, if you take the martial art kalari paitu that was banned by the britishers uh, many of the classical dances, because I'm involved in Bharatanatyam, we actually study about it, uh, that the uh, British actually banned them, uh, saying that this is Devdasi culture. Uh, they compared it to prostitution, whereas it is, in, it, it, they are the divine dances. And that mm -hmm. has been written in the fifth Veda, that is the Natya Shastra. So uh, you see, our heritage is very, very elite, very evolved, and it is eternal. It will stay forever. The problem is that the Western uh, people in the Western countries recognize what we have. Uh, when I go to the Natyala where we study Bharatanatyam or I do martial art, the, the Kalari Pai too, we have more foreigners than Indians. They recognize what we have. Uh, we people, uh, not that we are bad, but we, we people have been taught otherwise. So there needs an entire uh, you know, paradigm shift in the way we think. Uh, there is no doubt that the immediate culture, the society that we have, has a very naive and simplistic approach. But that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with the Indian culture. It's so eternal. It gives that um, absolute strength. It is uh, the interpretation that is wrong. Uh, it is true that we, we, we uh, you know, when, when girls say that we uh, like the Western culture, it is because our immediate society is like that. Uh, when you walk on the road, people stare at you. They don't want you to go, do good things. Um, even, um, you know, uh, th there are the women are sometimes not supporting other women. I actually might just uh, change, take a little detour and say that when I see events like this, uh, when a wonderful woman like you who has done great work uh, and, you know, you are uh, helping other women to, uh, you know, um, uh, shine and, uh, you know, bring them into limelight. This is a classic example of women support women and we need more of that. Uh, so uh, definitely our immediate society needs to know more about Indian culture and the heritage that we have and put it in the right perspective. Once that is done, people will not, you know, the whole world is looking at us. So people, they will realize that what Indian culture, how divine and great it is. And it's actually the most ultra modern culture ahead of our times. But we have not put it in the right perspective. You're not just uh, understanding it properly. So beautifully explained. Exactly. That, that's it. Actually, it is uh, very much evolved and very much ultra modern culture, actually. So uh, actually, for your uh, information, just I learned a little bit color it. So oh. I, but I've forgotten now. <laughs> it's a long ago it was. But I loved it and became very good at it. But I never practiced after that. So I, I have forgotten. Maybe um, in future, I'd love to go back and uh, learn from you. <laughs> so you can do online classes because I used to think that, uh, you know, we don't have access to it. I started because I felt that my the certain things in me, my response time, my speed, my agility, my reflexes were not as sharp as they should be. And so I joined it for that. But once I uh, you know, it's uh, it, it may be something related to warfare, but it completely changes you so much from deep within that, uh, you know, there's a lot more to it, but you have to only experience it to realize it. And, you know, I mean, I, I would give you the details for the online classes, you know, you can join. Uh, it's, it's amazing. We have people from all over the world. That's that's wonderful, definitely. And later I'll talk to you and I'll know all the details. So, you know, when it comes to like, since we are talking about calorie pie, like it's so interrelated. Yoga, calorie pie, Ayurveda, like everything is interrelated. When I was doing, um, I was doing the calorie pie, at the same time I learned the Ayurvedic massage also from the same family, you know. Oh. And um, it's like all the mantras, I was Sakti Puja. So it's like, it's so interrelated uh, things, our Vedas, everything. It's uh, when the women is the power, women, all the men are worshiping women. What 
this is the ultra modern society the india and we just um, we are misunderstanding our culture we just i don't maybe because of the lot of invasions we had lot of you know 800 uh, years we just different different kind of forces they invaded us and that is the reason maybe we have forgotten but this is the time i think that we have to revive and we have to just think that what we had we have to bring it back we have as you rightly said we have gone back so we have to go back more and more yes. and bring it to the present to come to full circle <laughs> exactly it come to full circle yes so now we'd love to know all the uh, like bodybuilding definitely we uh, heard about your journey how you started then the your success like one step like the success definitely gave you all the power like when you started success, succeeding so those stories we would love to know from you yes nothing succeeds like success and uh, uh, it it may sound like a paradox but because i didn't have anything in india uh, i traveled abroad and uh, you know since i was traveling and i was doing i wanted to take uh, get the training from the people who are the very best uh, so uh, you know i went to uh, great people you know olympia champions and people who are uh, you know getting olympians in us i stayed with them and i learned a lot from them uh, so uh, you know they helped me to select which competitions i must do and uh, you know when i would go uh, to countries in europe and uh, usa even the girls how they would say oh you're from india we have not seen uh, anybody from india doing this kind of thing and how i mean like you're breaking norms and there were competitions i won there were competitions i didn't win but people would always get back to me and say that uh, there was a lady jan tana she's a very close friend of uh, arnold uh, you know uh, there was a competition in uh, barcelona which i didn't do very well in but she came up to me and she said that everybody was talking about you that we have one lady here from india and she said you make a difference and don't worry about it so you know uh, then i started getting noticed of course in india itself back home that this uh, woman she travels uh, you know to one country or the other and then she's doing this uh, so you know it was uh, it was very special i got a lot of respect from men too uh, because you know the the men understand that even for them it is so difficult to build a muscular body and what it takes and so they see a woman doing it and a lot of boys used to come up, come up to me and say that i want you to meet my mother because you know my mother is your age and uh, she's uh, you know she's kind of given up in life and uh, she's a bit laid back because you know the the way women totally surrender themselves to their families and they don't, don't care for themselves uh, so you know uh, that that helped me a lot and um eventually now i am an uh, international judge in the uh, international federation of bodybuilding so uh, you know i i a lot of girls come up to me and they give me all the love so it's it's uh, it's very gratifying so how do you feel like we would love to know like how do you feel this success like which is earned by only you just there is nothing you can say like okay that person has given me this that person has given me this is like totally completely yours so how do you feel like this is your feeling we'd love to know it is it is tremendous you know it is very gratifying and i all i feel that i must also give back i've seen a lot i've seen uh, you know mental sickness with my mother with my child my all my life i feel like at a platform uh, you know i do talk to parents who have special children who have given up and you know uh, you know they have children they say they're not able to speak and i say look what i have done my son uh, sang on a public uh, stage he sang very well so you know these are uh, i get a chance to do something uh, good and i feel that the purpose of my life uh you know is satisfied i i feel really good about it and yes bodybuilding is something you know you cannot the why bodybuilders get the respect it's not an olympic recognized sport also but you know you cannot cheat on that you cannot buy it you cannot tell your uh, you know your assistant or your uh, worker to say your the your, your domestic help to say okay uh, run two rounds and come or lift these weights for me no matter how rich you are how poor you are whatever you are you got to you know do it yourself you got to train yourself you got to have an absolute control over your diet you cannot indulge and in every gram every day for years together you got to be in place so uh, that level of sacrifice and perfection is something and that is why i say the bikini is the most sacred dress 
there are people who come and say that you know bikini is something that uh, you know it's kind of you're exposing your body i say you cannot cheat even one gram of rice on that uh, you know you cannot cheat one repetition of your uh, weight training on that you cannot you cannot cheat on your sleep you got to sleep in time you got to wake up in time you got to be 100% you when you go on an international stage you are meeting champions from every country and defeating them so that there can be nothing more sacred on it you cannot cheat you cannot cover up your body and go it is it is just there it is that's the highest level of exposure when thousands of people judge you and mark you for your country so there is no more no sacred dress at all so that is something very very special and um, i i have uh, completely changed my perspective about uh, bodybuilding uh, you know in these last few years uh, where people would think that you just uh, you know become slim and go on stage and show off your body is just not that so the very fact that i got to see life uh, in a different perspective for for you know for, for my own need of self actualization and understanding the human body that you know you can convert uh, a body into a piece of art uh, you know you can actually sculpt it is something so beautiful so beautifully you have explained yes so uh, since you talked about food the diet chart would love to know what actually you eat uh, that changes from time to time and uh, but, uh, at least you know people will have some idea at least how to have the body like at least not like you to stay healthy so your uh, diet chart would help us Yes. Uh, see, first of all, there are a lot of fat diets here. Uh, you know that you have to have a balanced diet. You know, right? Because this is something you're not going to do for a day. You're going to do it forever. And forever. Uh, I think uh, bodybuilding is different from competitive bodybuilding. Uh, competitive is different, but when you are building your body, as I said, it's always gaining muscle and losing fat and becoming the best version of yourself. So it has to be something which is sustainable until the end of your life. it keeps you disease free it gives you the ability to do to work endlessly and tirelessly from morning to night without getting tired until the end of your life so that is that means it has to be a balanced diet it cannot be a fat diet so a lot of people go on a ketogenic diet or intermittent fasting that's fine but you know it's not going to be there forever balanced diet you you have to teach your body how to assimilate every macronutrient so you know i keep a balance of carbohydrate proteins fats uh, uh, green vegetables and uh, one of the thing is that i i have clients uh, who want to lose weight one very very you know major thing i tell them i will tell you what to eat you have to tell yourself what not to eat uh so you know you need to be able to eat at that much that keeps you strong you are not going on an anorexic diet or you know lowering your calories just to uh, get thin you know people who are starting on the road are thin but they don't have a structure you need to build a strong body to be able to do whatever you want to do uh and then then uh, you know you you need to uh, uh you know you you some people nibble in between if they are feeling weak uh they nibble something you know and they sub- they find something indulgent and they take a little bit of this and little bit of that that discipline you know you need to just rise above it you have a greater purpose in life you should know how to prioritize uh i go to get togethers uh, you know we have a monthly get together with the with our schoolmates from the 80s and uh, you know they all eat and drink i i tell them i share the bill but i tell them that i am with you i i will i'm just i just come here for your company i'm not going to eat anything at all it doesn't affect me you can sit in front of me and eat whatever you want to eat it doesn't affect me so i feel more than actual uh, diet you know balanced diet we, we all know we all know we shouldn't be eating this and that it's the main thing is more than knowing the balanced diet is how to control your mind how to develop that stillness that calmness uh, maybe that is in that you can learn from yoga as uh, you may teach but that uh, maturity you know that that evolution of the mind that is more uh, important and relevant than actual diet but yes uh, you know just uh, to figure it a balance of carbohydrate protein and fat indian diet has too much of carbohydrate uh, people must understand that so they must raise their protein level uh, you know try to minimize even uh, in the vegetarian diet the vegetables and the pulses 
they have uh, some component of carbohydrate. So that must be kept in mind when, when you calculate, you must get sufficient protein. People have myths about protein, uh, your hair, skin, nails, your hormones, uh, everything is protein. So you must get sufficient amount of protein. So uh, the, especially the women, especially housewives, they really neglect their diet. They really, uh, after feeding everyone, the, they just whatever left. It's not always, but most of the time, especially Indian women. So uh, what actually they should do? They should think about that uh, taking more protein or uh, just um, change their diet t totally. Or like uh, they mostly they don't go for buying extra thing. Like they just they want to take whatever they have, like dal vagara, dal vagara, whatever they have. Right? How they can have you know sufficient protein from gharke, you know whatever we have. You know, would you like to just highlight those points, please? First of all, we take uh, much more calories than we need. We think we need calories. If somebody is sad. They, they, they eat something because actually the brain, you know, uh, they, the, uh, the biochemical called serotonin is produced when you eat a high carbohydrate diet and that kind of elevates your mood. So they, everything, you know, if you're thirsty, you think you're hungry. So you need to think right, as I said earlier. So we are actually, you know, Buddha said, you just need handful of food. Uh, um, the main thing is, the main problem with our food is that uh, the portions are too high. And they don't calculate, a lot of people are advised to keep a food diary because they don't calculate the little things which they eat in between, which may be smaller in portions, but very high in calories. So you look at uh, food which are very high in portions, so the volume is very high and they are low in calories, like green leafy salads. If you have a lot of that, the calories will be low, but your stomach will remain full. And you know, you will have good digestion because of the fiber. Uh, when it comes to protein, protein is, uh, you know, we, it, we know it is in a lot of things. And when you talk, when, uh, when you said that uh, Indian women eat whatever is left over because they don't want to waste, uh, you know, your body is such a sacred thing. If you're going to put, dump everything inside it, it's a greater loss of money also because you're going to pay for it when you grow older, you know, paying the medical bills and, you know, having... Uh, difficulty with your knees and then hiring help and then taking medicine. So actually it's economically not a good idea. If, if you feel that there is some food that is wasted, it is better to donate that food rather than, uh, you know, think that I don't want to waste it. Wasting is a sin. People are dying of hunger and I'm wasting food. It's so bad. So let me eat all of this. So that is a huge, huge waste. There can be no greater waste than that because you're dumping it in your body which is a sacred place. So uh, this this one thing, you know, if women learn that I, I'm not wasting food, so I should eat it all, is the greatest waste that they can do. So it's better to, uh, you know, donate it. There are a lot of, you know, stray animals. There are a lot of uh, people, if the food is fresh, then there are a lot of people, uh, you know, we, we have somebody who, who collects food, uh, waste food for cows. Uh, so, you know, a lot of things can be done uh, with the food that you feel is wasted. But when you're putting something in your body, you should be very, very careful about it. Uh, protein is, you know, in many vegetables like spinach, uh, mushroom, bees, beans. Uh, there are a lot of uh, vegetables. And then we have grains like quinoa now and soya. So uh, cottage cheese, tofu, there are a lot of things which have protein. And of course, the non-vegetarian food is very, very rich in uh, protein. Not everybody eats non-vegetarian food, uh, but definitely uh, in both the versions, you can find sufficient amount of protein and omega-3 and good fats. So, uh, you know, that that's an entire lesson, you know. That's... So, exactly. So, we have to just change our mind, especially the viewers who are watching women. They have to change their mind that well, I'm going to waste this food. Definitely, there are, especially in India, there are many NGOs who are collecting fruits and you know, distributing among needies. So I think uh, we can always just uh, contact them and, you know, uh, keep them proper in the refrigerator and just give it to them. So many uh, who are really, who need those food, they can be served. So yeah, that is the way we can serve others also. And we can understand that our body is as our, um, you know, um, Puran and the Veda said uh, that our body is totally temple and God is inside our temple. So God is inside and body is temple. So why disrespecting our body when 
why not respecting so this is really wonderful and you know, knowing that uh, a woman uh, when after getting married after having a child you know started and becoming so successful you know it's a it's phenomenal it's really it's 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 so much inspiration for the all the women not only women men too but especially women who really give up in their lives and uh, since we are today we are talking about women i would like what do you think about feminism when i started talking to you i can i could feel so much love and compassion inside you you know so but you are bodybuilder definitely so you know people people have that much mindset you know the, your bodybuilder means you have kind of heart kind of thing you know so but um like what would you like to say about today's feminism i find it really a bit not really um the right way today's feminism is going somewhere very wrong way it's taking the wrong track so uh, i would, we, the viewers and including me i'd like to know uh, what do you think about today's feminism in india especially <laughs> Yeah, you know, okay, uh, uh, any person like you have done Kalri Pad and that's something so beautiful. Um, you know, our teachers teach us that when you are, uh, you know, it's the strongest people who are the most calm. And, uh, you know, it manifests itself in a different way because it needs such amount of control energy. When you talk about uh, feminism, then women, uh, <clears throat> it's just being projected. Yes, it's not being projected in the right way. I feel that now it's actually the men who need uh, men empowerment because women have become stronger. Uh, women uh, know, you know, women were always strong, actually, even when they were being suppressed. Probably one of the reasons why they were being suppressed was because they are very, very evolved creatures. And that, that if you are strong, you will see that the people around you, no matter how calm you remain, you don't do anything to anybody, but people are dead very, very intimidated by just your potential. They say, oh my God, she's got huge potential. Let us suppress her just now. So women have been suppressed over centuries. You know, it happens. But now women, there are a lot of moves to, uh, you know, empower women. They have been bullied there. That's a harsh reality in our society. But now what's happening is that the men have not learned to live with this strong women. And that is why the men are suffering. There are certain things which are expected out of men. Uh, you know, there are certain norms. But when a man learns how to cook, he is empowered. And, you know, when a man understands a woman better, actually he gets a very, very good, strong woman who will uh, help him in his life. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know how come when a man and woman both work in the office and come at, uh, in the evening and a woman goes to the kitchen and she's working, looking after the children, washing, cleaning, everything. And the man is just sitting, watching TV and having a drink. How can you say that a man is more strong? The man is not strong. He is not empowered. He is not being taught how to help. And that actually is the uh, foundation of the, you know, when because the, because of the kind of relationships we see, uh, you know, in uh, married couples, that the man thinks that he's not supposed to do it, but the woman is overworked. So uh, the man thinks that I'm at comfort, but actually he is not getting the love. Uh, so by the time the couple grows old, the woman is, you know, deep inside. She has a deep-seated negativity and frustration towards the man, which manifests itself in different ways. So it actually comes back on the man. And by the time the man is older, uh, you know, she has built her place with the children because she's been looking after them single handedly. And the man is actually singled out. And then he thinks that, uh, you know, we have the jokes on women, which is so bad. Uh, so when a man is empowered, the man learns how to cook. The man learns how to help. The man learns in reality that respecting women is not putting up putting her up on a pedestal and worshipping her or fighting for her rights. The real, you know, the real respect is that in your family, help the woman and, you know, be her best friend and let her be. Don't judge her. Uh, don't compare yourself with a woman if she is better than you. If uh, men are allowed that, it will be men who will be empowered. And that only can, uh, you know, uh, give the balance in the society. So women are empowered. Women will take care of themselves. You give anything to a woman, she'll make a home out of it. She will make something beautiful out of it. What is happening in our society, we are trying to empower the woman further, but we are not teaching the men how to live with them. 
so we see a lot of parents who try to bring up their girls like boys but we don't see parents very few parents have the courage to bring up their sons like their daughters that is the problem so uh, the feminism that is happening may have a political intonation to it may have some other uh, ulterior motive to it and it's only a section of women who are actually benefiting the society is not changing at all in, in fact people are becoming more misogynist than ever thinking that women empowerment is all crap so uh, you know the, 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 the whole thing needs there needs to be a radical uh, you know shift realignment of this whole uh, women empowerment and feminism thing exactly you very rightly you said yeah the men they have to be empowered because we really don't understand the meaning of empowerment you know meaning of empowerment in our society is like getting a job kind of a woman is getting a job earning money a man is getting a job earning money you are empowered that is financial empowerment the total empowerment it has to be emotional the a man uh, you know um, as if you are not if you have compassion inside you if you don't feel for the your partner so you are not empowered even the same goes to the same goes to the women too you know so and um, this this empowerment i think the whole society the same thing i talk about talk to you know people that we need real empowerment it's just people just keep talking about empowerment 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 without understanding the meaning very rightly you said and i hope that today's generation understand it and they understand the ordinary said that yeah we are just half and half just we complete each other we don't compete with each other so yeah. this is the way i say so let's just pray that we understand today's youth the women and men both we understand the real empowerment and just start completing each other yes absolutely yes yeah so um and like your your son today we would love to know like the mother he has got and he is the reason for all the success he he was the reason that you started going to the school so all the success uh, definitely yeah. so we would like to know how does he feel about it well uh, you know he is now he will be 32 years now in november and uh, so very happy birthday to him <laughs> <laughs> thank you uh, i will tell him that but uh, you know see he is uh, you know still having his challenges uh, he just wants to live a happy life uh, we tried a lot he did his graduation and post graduation in uk uh, we had difficulties uh, getting it uh, getting his higher studies in india but we had a comparatively sensitive environment there and he was able to do it uh, so you know he assists me in whatever i do uh, you know we live uh, in harmony but yes i do worry about uh, you know what will happen uh, when when i'm not there and you know he needs to be able to handle his very simplistic and naive in his own you know in his little world uh, so he needs to of course uh, improve a lot and for me it's a lifelong process one of the reasons i like to be fit is that i know i have to work for him uh, until the end of my life and probably prepare uh, you know his life after i go uh, that's a reality for me uh it's uh, uh, it's never going to be a fairy tale but uh, you know we are living with it and uh, i think i'm till now i am i have done a good job because if i look at the graph that when he was uh, very small maybe one and a half years two years at the time it looked as if he'll never be able to speak he'll never be able to sit still and uh, now he drives he's done his classical music he's done his post graduation and he is working with me so if i look at the graph it's uh, it's phenomenal it's almost impossible so uh, i wish that you know our our uh, government comes up with so there are a lot of pro provisions for physically handicapped people uh, but when child has uh, you know a difficulty with his uh, you know mindset and uh, there is a mental challenge what happens is that no matter how much money you leave for a uh, for an individual uh, the society and the people around you will crush them so there has to be uh, there have to be greater provisions you know for their safety and uh, these things so for me it's still a struggle uh, he says that uh, i i don't care much if you become miss olympia as as long as uh, we live happily i am fine and i think that is uh, what a good human being would say you know that you no matter what you are in the outer world uh, at a, at a home if you are uh, you know able to live at peace that is uh, you know real victory in life
Exactly. That is what real victory is. And, and you know, Rita, what I believe that you'll be totally fine. You don't have to worry. You know, there is a, this energy is working, this universe is working unique way. And that, that is the reason I think today you are who you are. Otherwise, you had no reason to be, you know, to be into that bodybuilding thing. So, um, you know, being in a spiritual world, what my experience is, I also get you know, sometimes very worried about things, then I make myself understand that I don't have any power to control it. Only I have to just give it to the universe and it will take care of it. So definitely, um, it will, I'm sure the universe has planned for him and in the way universe had planned for you too. So, yes. and, uh, so this is wonderful, you know, knowing a woman you know, not only materialistic way successful, but the spiritual way also with so much knowledge. You're so successful as a mother, as a uh, as an individual, as a human being, and definitely uh, your uh, hard work brought you a lot of success. Those are like phenomenal. So it was pleasure knowing you. It was really uh, great talking to you. It's not just I feel like I have a lot to learn from you. So this is just our beginning. With time to time, I will just keep knocking your door, door okay? Come and teach us, you know? So uh, definitely, this is just, uh, we are starting. And thank you so much for making time and coming to the Nupurti Wari show. Thank you so much, Rita. Thank you. So much, it's a privilege. And uh, you are also a very, very phenomenal woman. It's your greatness that you're bringing forth uh, women who have done uh, well in their walks of life. Um, I'll be writing a book and uh, yes, uh, I'm really looking. This as a lady who's written a book on my uh, life, a biography, and that will be uh, coming forward uh, soon. And there's also a web series coming up with Netflix. So you can look forward to that. And uh, so I hope that we'll interact a lot in future. <laughs> you rock. <Yes. laughs> definitely can't wait for the web series, definitely. Can't wait for the web series and your book as well. And um, yes, so we have to be, we have to talk about it in our next session. Definitely. Yes. I can't wait to watch, <laughs> watch you. Thank you so much. And for the viewers, I would like to say I have been doing a lot of interviews and um, I'm just calling her Rita. She's a wonderful human being, you know, so much love, so much compassion she has inside her. And um, do learn a lot of things from her because she was the one who built herself. It's not, there is nobody to support her. So we need more women like her who can empower our society. So thank you so much, Rita, for coming. And, uh, you know, it was such an enlightened, you know, we got enlightened by through your talk and uh, definitely looking forward to your Netflix and yeah. uh, your web you know, series. Thank my talks, I talk about health and fitness and all that, but uh, uh, this was very, very special and it will always remain very close to my heart. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. But this is our beginning, definitely. Thank you. Loads of love to your son and to you as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we will be definitely in touch and we'll talk. All right. Yeah. Okay. So this one will be edited. Don't worry. <laughs> This <laughs> okay. So sending you loads of love. Yeah, you too. Okay. Bye. 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 That was the lovely conversation with Dr. Rita Jairat, and we have learned a lot of things, not only about her life, about the struggle of each and every woman's life. And we have learned that we can do everything and anything without comparing ourselves with others and especially with men. We can complete each other. So next week, next Saturday, we'll be back with another dynamic guest. Before that, do subscribe our channel, Yoga Nanupur, and do follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and like our page, Facebook, Yoga Nanupur. So next Saturday, I'll see you and do take care of yourself and love yourself too. Subratri, good night. We ask me Namaste. 
subscribe now and press the bell icon never miss an update